So you're the new supervisor. You've been chosen amongst your peers as the best person at your job. The skills that got you here won't keep you here. You might have been really good at your job and part of the team, but now your job is different. Most people want to be the boss because they want to be in charge. Well, I hate to tell you, you're not in charge. You are there to support the team and help it accomplish its goals. Let's jump into these 10 tips. Tip number one, make a good impression. Never forget that it's not about you and it never was. It's about how you build your team and get them to meet the goals they've been assigned. The sooner you stop focusing on how you look to others and start focusing on what the team needs to be successful, the better, the better your impression will be. Tip number two, getting others to like you. As a super, as a new supervisor, you need to establish your authority, expectations, and parameters with your team. Okay, they will like you if you provide those guidelines. Clearly communicate with them, and you are fair and consistent with your follow-through. Promising little favors, giving in, or letting things slide because you want people to like you. These are deep holes that are hard to get out of. People want to hear the rules from you and need to know how you will enforce them. It's important to remember that what the previous supervisor did or what the company rules are in the handbook don't always matter. You've got to decide what rules will apply to how you're going to get your goals achieved. Once you've decided what your goals are, your job is to create rules that will help you get those results. And you're best to do that by consulting with your team. You'll find that rules, especially the ones that are clearly linked to desired outcomes, can give people a sense of security and they actually allow them to do their jobs better. Be the one to communicate those expectations and share them often. Tip number four, old friendships. It hurts, but you can't keep your old buddies, at least not in the same way. Trying to keep up the old friendships like nothing has changed will not work because the truth is there is a lot that has changed. You are now responsible for evaluating these people. You decide whether or not they get a raise, how many hours they get, the vacation time they get. You have power of dynamic and that power changes the relationship. You better be you better start off by making new friends amongst your peers. Five. Your work responsibilities. This one is real simple. Stop doing your old job. Usually you're promoted because you did your job very well. You now have management skills to learn. If you keep doing your old job, the team will slack off and expect you to cover for their mistakes. As a manager, you have to provide the environment and tools for other people to do the work. Then let them do it. Learning the ropes. Remind yourself that you are new to this job and keep telling yourself that you only know what you know. Stay humble and be open to learning from other supervisors and colleagues. These will be your lifelines regardless of how many times you get promoted. Even when you think you know better, remember that your theories have not been tested. Once your reputation is more established, you'll be able to use that to gain momentum and cooperation. Until then, take it slow. Tip 7. Keeping your promotion. In your desire to solve everything that comes up, there's a good chance you will overextend yourself, miss some deadlines, and tick off some people. Avoid this by asking yourself, is this my problem? If not, leave it be. Only take on what's in your control and don't be afraid to delegate or hold others responsible for fulfilling their roles. Tip number eight, showing appreciation to your employees. There is one reason why you, you have a job as a supervisor, and that's because there are employees. Without them, you'll be unemployed and your organization's profits would be zero. So show appreciation, okay? And don't expect that their paychecks are enough to keep them happy, okay? People need to feel valued and appreciated. So find ways that suit your style of personality and theirs and let them know that they matter and that you're grateful for what they bring to the table. You'll be surprised at how far this goes in building trust, loyalty, and helping you to get the results your department needs. Tip number nine is how to manage up. Okay, when you step into the management role, it means you have to negotiate both up and down. Figure out what your superiors want and learn to read their styles and preferences. Provide them information the way they want it, 
Everybody wants information differently. Some people want to be called. Some people want to be texted. Some people want to be emailed. Figure out what they want. And keep them in the loop at all times. Okay. Above all, remember that your managers are people too. They need input, they have strengths, and they have weaknesses. Find ways to work with them. Being a new supervisor is a big step in your career, and with all first steps, you can expect a few stumbles, bumps, and bruises along the way. Invite these missteps into your process and learn from them. Always be learning. As you move forward, building relationships with your team and colleagues, you will increase your authority, credibility, and getting to the results that you know your team is capable of. Tip number 10 is remember, you're going to be judged not on what you do, but on what you get your team to do. And the most important skill that you can learn is how to listen. You need to listen to your superiors to get directions on what's expected of your team. You need to listen to your team to see what's going on and find out what needs to be done to make sure you can reach your goals. So congratulations again on your promotion, on being a supervisor. Uh, good luck to you. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, leave a comment down below if you have any questions or if you want me to do a video on a specific topic. Here's to your success.